Rich, World's Top 32 in 2019. And these are some really interesting teams. I know way earlier on the broadcast, you mentioned the potential of hoping to maybe see a Palkia. And sure enough, Tegan bringing that Palkia out with a Regia Lecky, a Ferrothorn, Rodon Heat, Porygon 2, and Grimmsnarl. Henry going with that Calyrex Ice Rider that we just saw. Regia Lecky, Torkoal, Incineroar, Sableye, and a Mimikyu here. This is an interesting matchup, and I'm mainly looking at Rotom Heat from Tegan Zen. I don't know how Henry actually deals with Rotom Heat. Like, there's no great super effective damage. Rotom Heat's really strong in the format right now, particularly because of how it matches up against Calyrex Ice. And I, I don't know, I'm just looking at Henry's team composition, and it feels like a Dynamax Rotom Heat can just completely sweep through here. You know, I'm obviously excited about Palky as well, uh, but I, I honestly think Rotom Heat's going to be the star for Tegan's team. And then for Henry, it's really about how do I actually deal with this Rotom Heat in the long term? Because... I don't see many answers, to be honest. I think the best is maybe to stall out its Dynamax and then just use a lot of powerful attacks, maybe your own max moves to deal with it. Uh, but I think it's gonna be really, really tough to break through Rotom Heat from Tegan's end. So I think Tegan's win condition is probably just play towards that Rotom Heat as well as you can. Uh, there's a lot of bulk on her team as well. So kind of just try to not get KO too quickly in the early turns, set up Rotom Heat and really just go to town from there. Uh, and then from the opposing side, it's about maybe stalling out Rotom Heat's Dynamax and then figuring out who to best max and when. I think, you know, Calyrex Ice is a possible option. The only thing is that it just doesn't do that much into Rotom Heat. Uh, so ideally, maybe you get Calyrex Ice plus two max Hailstorm after Rotom Heat's Dynamax is over, but that's a tall ask. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into this match. It's going to be the last one from the Oceanic Racket for today. Mimikyu and that Calyrex coming out right away. Henry's side here. And then Tegan going with the Rotom Heat to lead as next to that Grimmsnarl. Yeah, so I mean, I think Rotom Heat really in a dream position to begin with. And I'm curious about its moveset. You know, are you Nasty Plot? This looks like Dual Screens Grimmsnarl, so... Uh, wow, Willow is and Ally Switch on that Calyrex. Not gonna be the typical, like, Nasty Flood set that you see, but... Oh man, I think Willowus makes this even harder for Henry, to be honest, because his main offensive output comes from Calyrex Ice. If you burn that immediately, I, I don't even see how Henry wins, like, a late game, even if you get the weakness policy activated on Calyrex. So, uh, turn one here, I mean, you know, could go for something like Protect on Calyrex, Trick Room with Mimikyu, could switch Calyrex out, for example, but... I still just think this Rotom is so tough to deal with, because we got a sneak peek of Grimstone's moveset there. And it has fake tears as well. So it's like, how in the world do you deal with fake tears and a Dynamax Rotom combination when you have no way to threaten it with super effective damage in return? I don't know what the answer to that is. Yeah, Calyrex not wanting to risk anything here, swapping out for that Incineroar Rotom, going for the Will O Wisp, not doing anything against that Incineroar, and Mimikyu gets a free Trick Room up here. Trick Room goes up, you know, and that's nice. But then the question, once again, is how is Henry actually dealing damage right now? I think one answer could be Dynamax and Cineroar. I know that seems kind of wild, but Dynamax the Max Darkness into Rotom actually doesn't seem like a terrible option. And hence, Henry ends up not considering that. And I think it makes sense. I mean, if Rotom Dynamax is there, Reflect is up, you do so little damage. So he's just going to go for a U-turn, offer some positioning here. Um, but, you know, since Tegan ended up not Dynamaxing, it doesn't end up getting punished. I was like, if you Dynamax instant there and Rotom doesn't max, Max Darkness actually does a sizable amount there. Sure, Reflect is up, but Rotom's defense isn't amazing. Uh, now Rotom essentially gets to break the disguise on Mimikyu with that Thunderbolt, and now can potentially Dynamax in the subsequent turns. Henry's revealed all of his Pokemon as well, and all of those are really weak to Rotom, right? I mean, once again, I think these are probably Henry's best options. I just, like, it's a team that just doesn't have too much to deal with Rotom Heat specifically, right? So, Torkoal comes in, sure, that's kind of nice, but what can you actually do against Rotom Heat? Maybe a Body Press? Yawn would be really interesting here. I think if you have Yawn, you can at least shut down Rotom for subsequent turns, but uh, this next turn, I think, is really tough for Henry and Tegan, now getting both screens up, definitely in a commanding position. Mm -hmm. Tegan as well, looking at that idea of maxing the Rotom, kind of going back and forth on what she wants to be doing here, but I mean, that Rotom next to the fake Tears Grim Snarl, I mean, that just seems so strong. The Mimikyu going to be switching out here on Henry's side, going for that Calyrex, and that's going to be taking the full hit from this Rotom here. Yeah, and Tegan opting for a pretty cool option here, going for the fake tears and the max lightning. You know, if Mimikyu stays in there, you get the knockout onto it. He switched out to the Calyrex, which actually Henry did, and I, I thought that was kind of risky, right? Because 
I feel like Calyrex is Henry's only way, real way of doing damage in this game. And so this is like the classic dilemma with Trick Room, where you you get Trick Room up, but then like you don't have an opportunity to just safely switch out. So you either hope your opponent knocks you out, or you just make the hard switch yourself. Henry ends up making the hard switch, but as a result, Calyrex Ice ends up eating that fake tears. We know Max Lightning is going to that slot, and there is going to be Yawn, so Rotom at least, you know, that, that's like the Rotom answer, you know, that it won't be able to just sweep in these next couple turns. But I mean, Calyrex takes so much damage from that Max Lightning, and it's at minus two special defense, so do you really want to stay in now is the question. Mm -hmm. So much pressure right out of the gate with that Rotom, but of course, if it goes for another attack here, it will be put to sleep. And that's just one of those things about Yawn. I mean, the opponent doesn't go to sleep right away, but the fact that they then have to consider repositioning or they risk just not being able to do anything after that turn is absolutely huge. Calyrex not risking taking the KO here and is going to swap back out for that Incineroar, the Rotom, only one turn of max before it gets to go back. I mean, it did a nice amount of damage for that max, but Tegan not wanting it to go to bed quite yet, opting to bring that Porygon 2 out on the field. Grimstarl will get that fake tears, hit it into the Torkoal just to get a good special defense drop. The Torkoal here going for Eruption, taking that KO on the Grimstarl and dealing a nice amount of damage on that Porygon 2 while they're at it. I think that like, that was a nice play from both players then. I really like the Rotom Heat switch out there. You know, it's not often that like, you switch out a Dynamax Pokemon after just one turn. But the reality is that Rotom is so good defensively and offensively in this matchup that even regular Rotom is just so good, like in a 4v1 kind of scenario, right? So the main thing here, and also, Sierra, I don't know if you saw that Porygon 2 move say she's got Protect, which is really interesting as well, Shadow Ball. So yeah, opting actually to protect here, and I think what's interesting is well, who do you Dynamax and when? Calyrex Ice is actually so low, so I was thinking maybe you consider maxing the Incineroar. Uh, it's actually just gonna be fake out into the Porygon, which protected, and I mean, we know Earth Power is going off into Palkia, so I, I feel like, I don't know, Henry could have gotten a little bit more off this turn. He's gonna basically give up the uh, Torkoal for around 30% of damage on the Palkia, and I'm not sure that's really worth it, to be honest. That was 30% of damage with a critical hit as well, <laughs> mind you, and... <laughs> I mean, just for that, Torkoal gets KO'd here, so I don't know, then that's also going to be the last turn of Trick Room as well, so yeah, it'll be really interesting on Henry's side to see what the Dynamax candidate is going to be. I mean, the Calyrex is just so low already, I can't imagine it would be able to do too much before getting KO'd itself. Yeah, exactly, and what's even trickier here is we've seen Tegan's movesets. That Porygon 2 is running a really interesting moveset with Protect and Shadow Ball. And you can see, yeah, Tegan's just opting to try to double up onto Calyrex here. If Calyrex maxes, I'm not sure it can actually take something like a Spatial Ren and a Shadow Ball. And if Henry doesn't actually get a Dynamax off in this game and doesn't do any damage with max moves, like, then there's no way I can see him winning this one. Because Rotom Key was already difficult to deal with, and to be honest, I still don't see the Rotom answer in the late game uh, because Tegan made that good switch. So, Calyrex is going to end up maxing here. Max Guard would make a lot of sense, uh, especially if, like, Calyrex wasn't initially running Protect. You can Max Guard and, I don't know, go for uh, some disruption onto the Porygon or the Palkia here. But let's see. No Max Guard! No max or spatial ren doing about half of its remaining health here. The Incineroar going for a U-turn, just a little bit of chip. I don't know. I don't think it's gonna take this hit from the Porygon too. Which I'll go back to the fact that I absolutely love this set on it. I don't think I've ever seen Protect over no, the yeah, cover, 100%. but I, I just had to circle back to that. I'm really, I really, <laughs> is I really it like that. Oh. It is enough. This Calyrex. Getting KO'd, I mean, taking that much damage earlier on from that Max Rotom Key, it was just absolutely humongous, which means Henry doesn't really get to utilize his Max at all. Yeah, in a game in which Rotom Key only got one Max move off, somehow Henry actually ends up getting zero Max moves off. So, you know, I, can, I definitely respect the play there. I think, I was honestly not 100% sure Shadow Ball was going to KO, especially since Spatial Ren actually didn't do that much. So if Calyrex hangs on there and even gets one attack off, maybe you're still in it. But um, this is a nightmare matchup, if I'm to be honest, for, for Henry, right? Not only are you up against Rotom Key, this Rotom Key also is will -O Oh, and by the way, there's a Grimmsnarl with dual screens and Protect Porygon, <laughs> by the way, with Shadow Ball as well. So it's like, if 
feels like the ultimate counter team, to be honest. And as I've said before, even if you have the right matchup, you still have to execute it properly. I think Tegan's played quite nicely across the board as well. So, uh, I, I, you know, like, it's really tough for matchups like this because the, the real question is, like, what can Henry really even do? I think he's actually made generally good plays. It's just that it's so, so difficult to do with Rune and Keith alone. So I'm thinking, you know, is there any way that Henry can maybe cheese Rotom Key for a one-hit KO with a max move on from something that's kind of obscure? I don't even know if there's an answer to that, though. <laughs> the fake out into the Palkia. Shadow Ball from the Porygon 2, dealing a nice amount of damage to that Mimikyu, which is just going to opt to get the Trick Room set up again here. I don't know. Like, Team Steam is just so unique with so many different ways to be dealing with what Henry is trying to throw at her, which I absolutely love, but it's definitely not the best case scenario for Henry here. And this point, I mean, I am not too sure what he can do here. Yeah, there's really not many options. I mean, Porygon at least doesn't have Recover here. That's typically, like, kind of, you know, tough to deal with in the end games. But uh, in this scenario, you can go for the... Yeah, I, like, it's it's pretty easy to stall out. That Shadow Wall means you can actually knock out Mimikyu easily. There's still that Rotom Heat in the back, and I just don't think Incineroar can really, like, 3v1 in this matchup. So, Palkia was actually uh, really essential, though, right? If Tegan didn't bring that Palkia... We don't have nearly as much, uh, nearly as much offensive pressure, and you know, Palkia is not the star of this game. It, it's really Rotom Key, but it's actually still really essential because otherwise, Tegan's kind of lacking in damage output. So, uh, it was the correct decision to bring Palkia. I mean, kind of a no-brainer. It's your restricted Pokemon, but uh, you know, still important to play correctly. And I mean, that's a perfect turn for Tegan once again. Reflect wears off, but it's a three v one now. I really just can't see Incineroar pulling it off at this point. 100%. Henry opting to double target into that Palkia slot to protect me in it so nothing could happen and Porygon 2 just picked up that KO. The Palkia is going to swap out here for the Rotom Heat and Darkest Lariat will be hitting into the Rotom doing about a third of the damage here as the Porygon 2 just opts to reverse the trick on here. Reverses the Trick Room, and at this point, I think it's a done deal for Tegan. Really, really well played by her, and it's it's there's just not enough damage, right? Like, Palkia can just come back in and go for uh, uh, any uh, attack at this point, and there's just no way Incineroar can really claw it off uh, at this point, or claw it back, I should say. So, yeah, huge credits to Tegan for how she played this matchup. I thought just really, really generally well approached, and uh, it's good execution right from the start to the beginning, and once again, I think it's it's just so tough for Henry because Rotom Heat alone makes this so difficult, and then Tegan has so many tricks up her sleeve as well. Speaking of tricks up her sleeve, we are going to see that ally switch coming out. So the Incineroar is going to be hitting a Darkest Lariat, but really is not doing too much as this Porygon 2 is free to hit another try attack into it. And I mean, on Tegan's side, she's just so many Pokemon still, and this Incineroar has no HP, so this game is pretty much said and done. And Henry's really going to have to reevaluate what he can do going into this second match here. Yeah, I mean, I love Tegan's lead. I think she brought the best four Pokemon for sure. And I think the general approach was basically perfect from her end. And the main thing from Henry's end is needs to basically be able to put in more pressure from damage right away. And that's on turn one against Rudin Heat. So I don't know. I'd love to see some kind of obscure Dynamax here because I don't know if Calyrex Ice even actually cuts it. So Dynamax uh, Incineroar was something I was talking about. Not 100% sure. I, it just feels like such a one-sided, lopsided matchup. And with the way Tegan's been playing, her execution has just been so on point. Mm -hmm. we, she didn't have to really rely too much. Obviously, that Max Lightning into the Calyrex earlier on in the game really paved the way for that Calyrex to get KO'd before doing anything later in the match. But the Rotom going for the one turn of Dynamax, leaving and not really reappearing until the end game just shows how strong the team is with all of its other components as well. So Henry really is going to have to sit here, readjust, think of a maybe different Dynamax target, different way to be approaching it. But regardless, let's hop into this match and see what he can do yeah i think it's just it it starts with turn one you gotta find some way to deal with that rotom heat so let's get this next game started i'm really curious on the approach here because I, i'm if i'm to be honest it's, it's just so tough for henry so uh looking forward to seeing maybe some tricks he has up his sleeve all right so on henry's side we see that calyrex again but with the reggie alecky this time around and on a tegan's side 
yet again that Grim Snarl next to that Rotom Heat here. All right, so, you know, Regieleki coming out this time. I, I can't help but wonder, like, is Regieleki get a Dynamax here? Because otherwise, Dino Thunderbolt, uh, Electroweb, Bolt Switches, none of those do too much, and it is going to be a Dynamax. Is it Dynamax Regieleki? <laughs> Don't see Dynamax Regieleki too often, but Regieleki <laughs> can hit so much damage with that Transistor ability as well as with that Magnet. Just, just sheer offense here, sheer speed, and... I mean, this is a big difference from last game where the Dynamax from Nerys End did nothing. And the Calyrex as well, going for that helping <laughs> hand. So this damage is going to be absolutely humongous here. The techs just are coming out from down under. Helping hand, Calyrex Ice, Dynamax Regieleki. This Rotom Heat, very interesting set as well. I mean, I actually think that's like the exact adjustment Henry needs to make to maybe stand a chance here, uh, because the matchup does feel kind of tough, but that's a great turn, and Willow actually misses Calyrex Ice as well. What a disastrous turn one there for Tegan. Henry not only picking up the KO, but Calyrex gets to dodge that Will-O-Wisp, which, I mean, at Tegan right now, you have to wonder, is she gonna go for that Will-O-Wisp again, or did she have to start looking at something else as that Palkia is coming in to the KO'd Brimstarl slot here. So, the, like, the reason why I really like that turn one from Henry's side was he was able to pick up the KO onto Grimstarl, get that electric terrain up, and light screen isn't up because Tegan went for that reflect instead, right? So, now Henry has the opportunity to put on so much offensive pressure this next turn. Another helping hand max lightning. I'm just curious whether or not they can one shot Rune Heat with the, uh, with the electric terrain, but Rodin, we also saw go for that cheeky ally switch. So, I, if Aleki targeted the Rotom Slam, Palkia takes his damage. I'm curious whether or not it's enough for a one hit KO. So, let's see where Aleki is targeting. It's gonna be a huge Max Lightning oh. into the Palkia slot, <laughs> but Palkia holds on barely with 26 HP and is able to fire a Max Quake off into the Reggie Aleki, which is not able to hold on here. That Palkia picking up that KO and getting the special defense boost to boot. Oh man, I mean, that's the dream come true, right? You're able to pick up the KO there. You're also able to get a special defense boost. More importantly, Rotom Heat still has not taken any damage. And Rotom Heat, we were talking about how important it was in the last game. I think Henry actually had the absolute right approach in trying to shut it down here, but just wasn't able to actually get it off effectively because of that ally switch. Ally switch will always do it. You never know when to expect it. And especially in a open team sheet thing like <laughs> it's this, even more it stressful. needs to like, it like, there's a lot of like mind games to it too. Mm -hmm. So you know the ally switch is there, but you also don't want to start over predicting and calling an ally switch that is never going to happen. So you have to take that 50-50, but Calyrex is just going to swap out here into the Incineroar on Henry's end here. And I mean, Tegan still has that. Ma Ma Max Palkia, but it's just barely holding on here. It is going to hit a Max Wormen into the Incineroar slot, though, picking up more than half of its HP. Yeah, it's a lot of damage. I mean, the fact Palkia even gets another attack off despite being as low HP is huge. will o comes out again and is not going to affect that Incineroar. So Mimikyu will be able to set up the Trick Room. I mean, Henry is definitely in a better spot than that last time around, but it's still tough. I mean, my question still is really, how do you deal damage into the Rotom, right? I guess the closest is Darkest Lariat from the uh, Incineroar slot. Uh, but, you know, Tegan was able to set up that Reflect earlier on, which is definitely nice, just for dealing with all the physical damage coming out from Henry's side right now. So, uh, Rotom actually going to go for that switch, going to be able to bring in that Porygon 2. And we know this Porygon 2 is Shadow Ball, which is actually really essential, because it means it has uh, more offense against this Mimikyu specifically. Play rough from the Mimikyu. Hitting into the Palkia is going to pick up that KO there, but I mean, the Palkia got to do so much out of its max turns this time around, so can't be too upset about that. And Cineroar is going to U-turn into that Porygon 2, looking to reposition itself a little bit here. And I mean, just two Pokemon left on Tegan's side here, but one of them being that Rotom Heat, it'll be really interesting to see how Emery deals with that. 
Yeah, Rotom Heat's just so tricky to deal with still, right? Especially because there's also that Shadow Ball. And I can't help but think if Tegan had hit that Will-O-Wisp on turn one, she'd probably have the game one at this point already because you don't even have to worry that much about Calyrex. Now Calyrex can potentially, you know, get that weakness policy activation through that self-shadow sneak. But I think Tegan's unique Shadow Ball Porygon here might end up coming up huge. It's a really big deal. You have to basically overheat on the correct turn onto the Calyrex because this Rotom doesn't have nasty pot. So if you carelessly overheat and the overheat doesn't KO Calyrex or, you know, Calyrex switches out, that could be a total disaster here. So Tegan just going for the will o and the Shadow Ball play. I like that a lot. I think it covers most of your bases here. It is going to be the self Shadow Sneak finally onto the Calyrex, but the thing is, even at plus two attack, Rotom actually still resists this damage decently well. Mm -hmm. Definitely going for that Glacial Lance there at that plus two. See how much damage this gets off here, but not really that much, all things considered. Calyrex is a hard-hitting Pokemon, dealing over half the damage to the Porygon 2, not even half to that Rotom Heat. Shadow Ball hitting into the Calyrex, picking up a little bit of chip, and that Will-O-Wisp finally connecting with that Calyrex here. So despite the fact that it has that weakness policy boost, um, that burn is just going to limit the amount of damage that this Calyrex can do going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And what's tricky here is to protect on Porygon as well, right? We, because of that protect, you're able to avoid some damage this next turn. Now Tegan has to make the important decision, do you just launch that Overheat into Calyrex, or do you go for uh, potential Thunderbolt onto it? Looks like she's willing to just go for Overheat. Makes a lot of sense here, I think. Uh, and so, this is gonna be close. I mean, I don't think Henry wants to switch out that Calyrex because those, you don't want to get rid of the boosts onto it. Uh, and so, you know, Porygon protecting here is really safe. Overheat into the opposing Calyrex will do- will pick up the knockout on the Calyrex if Calyrex stays in. And if you switch out, it's still an okay amount of damage. It's actually gonna be Mimikyu switching out, so I think uh, if Calyrex isn't protecting here, I mean, that should be a KO from Overheat, and then the question is, can Porygon and minus two Rotom actually call up this comeback? With Ally Switch and Protect, it's definitely a possibility. All right, especially with that Porygon 2 having the Shadow Ball, as you mentioned earlier, the Calyrex going for the Glacial Lance again. I mean, we saw how much damage it did last time. It's gonna be doing even less this time around. So as long as Overheat connects on this Calyrex here, it's going to be a 2v2, and it does. So Overheat going to pick up the KO on this Calyrex here. And it's so funny because, you know, Reflect went up on the first turn of the game, right? And I was like, oh, how relevant is it going to be, especially with Dynamax, Regieleki, and whatnot? Also, I, I didn't even talk about this when it happened. The fact Max Quake just one-shot Dynamax, Regieleki is exactly why, like, people don't Dynamax, Regieleki very often. <laughs> so being able to trade that was really, really big. So, you know, now when Incineroar comes out, you can pressure with Fake Out. Uh, Fake Out Swords Dance would be interesting. Fake Out play Rough into Porygon. You could also just go for a double on a Porygon with damage in general. So Swords Dance here can be a big deal from this Mimikyu, especially if Rhythm like, doesn't opt for a will o to that slot. But it's not going to be a Fake Out coming out. So just try attack right away from the Porygon into Incineroar. Wow. Mimikyu opting not for the Swords Dance, instead going to play Rough into that Porygon too. Also to note, the Mimikyu's disguise hasn't been broken yet, so Tegan does have to double hit into that to even start dealing damage. The Rotom going for the Thunderbolt though. Oh. I mean, the, the special attack drop from the Overheat, the, Tegan needed to get that KO on the Glass Tier, but like on the Calyrex, sorry, but that special attack drop is definitely hurting right about now when this Rotom can't pick up a KO on this Incineroar. Yeah, definitely devastating. I mean, now Troop Room's over, Rotom, you know, going uh, it is going to be faster, right? And so, I, I, Mimikyu, I really would like to see a Swords Dance uh, if it has it. Uh, otherwise, like, yeah, I mean, you're just relying on Shadow Sneak and play rough. It's really tough because the Rotom here can also burn the Mimikyu, and you have to add Ally Switch to the mix, right? So, uh, Mimikyu might be nervous for just going for Shadow Sneak because if you Shadow Sneak in a Rotom, Rotom can go for that Ally Switch. So. Yeah, we're just gonna see the protect from Rotom. Thunderbolt is gonna go into the Incineroar, and I think that was enough for a KO, yeah. Just enough to pick up that KO. I know I was watching that health bar. I was like, this either just hangs on or it gets knocked out with Shirley. Tegan picks up that KO on the Incineroar, and it is now a really hurting Porygon 2 and a half health Rotom against a <laughs> Mimikyu that hasn't even been touched so far this game. And no recover on the Porygon 2 here. I mean, there's no way for Porygon 2 to get any health back at this point, which, I mean, might become relevant. 
Yeah, I think if they were, you know, if there's a recover over like uh, try attack here, it would feel like a done deal. But regardless, I actually don't see how Mimikyu can deal damage to Rotom unless it has Sword Stance and gets multiple Sword Stances off and then gets a Shadow Sneak off. Especially because will o actually is gonna connect, gonna connect this time. So well done, Rotom there. And yeah, I mean, if... <laughs> okay, play Rob. Is this enough to KO? It's not even enough. <laughs> Five HP. Porygon two does not want to go anywhere, and that Shadow Ball hitting into the Mimikyu Whoa. is gonna get that special defense drop as well as break that disguise here. And I mean, this Mimikyu is just not doing enough damage, and that was before the burn even happened. And at this point, I think. Tegan just sealed this victory. Yeah, yeah, she's going for the Protect Thunderbolt. Love that decision here. And I, at the end of the day, this is why I was like, I just don't see how Henry deals with Rotom Heat, right? Like, it's not even Dynamax Rotom Heat we're talking about. It's the fact that almost all of Henry's Pokemon don't actually have even good neutral damage into it, right? The best is maybe Shadow Sneak. It's a great Protect from Porygon, covers for the play rough option. That special defense drop just accelerates kind of this end game. And yeah, now Thunderbolt is doing more damage. And Play Rough goes into that Porygon, so perfect protector. I think that uh, actually should just win the game now for Tegan because she can just go for Shadow Ball Thunderbolt, uh, which is super, super consistent. So yeah, opting for that Shadow Ball there. Uh, it's actually thinking about Ally Switch. <laughs> I think that totally works as well. Uh, you know, just conserving Porygon even more and really letting the Shadow Ball Porygon shine in this matchup. All right, of course, that Play Rough. Instead, hitting into the <laughs> Porygon 2 here. So unfortunately, Tegan ally swapping that Porygon 2 into its demise here. But regardless, this, the Rodom Heat versus the Mimikyu here. But that still kind of feels a little bad about that ally switch there. But <laughs> the Thunderbolt doing a good little chunk of damage and this play rough doing absolutely no damage. So this should be a pretty done deal, regardless of the Porygon 2 meeting an early end here. Yeah, that did 10 damage total. So you could see as soon as Tegan was able to knock out that Incineroar, she was in a really commanding spot. That Shadow Sneak did nine damage. So yeah, in the end, this Mimikyu without something like Sword Tans had no way to actually boost up, had no way to actually deal damage in a Rotom. And this was a really fun game. Honestly, I think Henry made the exact adjustment he could have made to keep himself into this set. The matchup is just so heavily skewed, but he found an opportunity, especially with that helping hand on Calyrex Ice. But in the end, Tegan was just a cut above some really, really